Hello and welcome back to another episode of Fintech Focus TV with me, Toby Babb. And today it is another revisit of some of our guests of 2020. Adam Bloomberg, how are you? I'm great, Toby. How are you doing? Really good indeed, thank you. And it's lovely to Very see you good. again. We were just reminiscing earlier on about when uh, when we spoke last, and I think it was December the 14th that this episode came out, which meant we shot it in sort of late November. And it seems like whilst that's not a, a huge amount of time ago, a lot's changed in the marketplace. And we'll come on to that in a, in a minute. And nothing seems to move faster in the world at the moment than the crypto and, and blockchain and, and digital asset space. So we're going we're gonna to really explore into that. But before we do, just remind everyone and those who haven't maybe seen the first episode a little bit about what you're doing at Interactions, because I think it's fascinating. Sure. Th thank you so much, Toby. Thanks for having me back on. So what we do at Interaxis is we focus on education around cryptocurrency, blockchain, decentralized finance. And our goal is not to get people to invest in it. It's not to convince you you should. You should make it a part of your portfolio. We just want to educate you. So we, we help financial advisors here in the U.S. We educate them so that they can learn how to make it a part of their practice and they can learn how to incorporate it into their clients' portfolios if their clients are, are having questions about it then we want financial advisors to understand it enough to decide if it's right, how it fits and, and such, and then how to make it part of their practice. Uh, we also recently launched uh, what we call Interaccess Academy, where we will teach anybody, anyone can go there and learn all about Bitcoin, how it started, cryptocurrency, how to invest, but, but more importantly, just how it works, because it might affect not only your family finances, it might affect your job, it might affect your company, your business, um, it's probably going to affect some part of your life. And we just want you to understand the, the technology, how it works and, and how it might affect you. And that's what our goal with the Interaxis Academy. And we're just going to keep adding and adding and adding more content to it. So that's our goal. We, we just want to educate people. And that academy is, uh, I think, one of the most needed things in the world at the moment, because it seemed uh, it seems at various stages there's this, this hype circles of crypto experts, which is effectively the uh, the man on the street who uh, puts their life savings into it and either goes up dramatically and everyone thinks they're Rockefeller or it goes off the cliff and they've lost everything. And that sort of sense of education, I think, is really interesting. But it doesn't just stop at the man on the street because there's a lot of feeling out in this and it's and it is such a volatile space i mean you gave me a statistic earlier on of the price well t tell us about the price of bitcoin last time we spoke and where we are today sure t tell me the, the last time we spoke which was a very different world ago right in in all sorts of senses right hmm. when, when we spoke last uh the price of bitcoin is about eighteen thousand eight hundred, something like that and, and i'm talking in us dollars eighteen thousand eight hundred dollars the last time that our that the podcast was released that you and I spoke. Currently, uh, about $56,100 as of this moment today. Absolutely extraordinary. That's, that, that's quite a change. Now, you know, things have changed in the world since then. It's, it's quite a different world than it was just several months ago. So the, the price of Bitcoin and, and cryptocurrency and the adoption of, of blockchain and decentralized finance has been unbelievable in that very, very short amount of time. So you know, when you and I spoke last and we were struggling to get people to come learn about it because they were saying, well, this, this could go back down again. We don't know if we trust it. Now it's people can't, pe people can't learn about it fast enough. Mm. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's uh, it, it, it is amazing. And you just say, look, it's the world's a very different place. It's only, as we say, five, six months ago since, since we were last mm. having that conversation. So within, within that, and with such a volatile uh, commodity and people saying, right, okay, it's the problems you were having last time about sort of people wanting to get educated. Now it's almost uh, irresistible to look at it. What stops that sort of undulation that we're, that we're seeing within, within the space? What, what gives people the confidence? Because it is a confidence play about its adoption, really, isn't it? What gives it the confidence that this isn't a, uh, another false dawn in the, uh, the journey of crypto? Look, what we know about crypto, what we've seen already is it is volatile to this point. It, it is very volatile in terms of the trading. And part of that is because cryptocurrencies, one, are, are somewhat speculative in that they represent some sort of company or some sort of protocol or, or, or some way that people are moving money all around the world. And th there just aren't that many people adopting it compared to how many people there are in the world, right? So you have a relatively few number of people that are moving moving money and therefore moving the markets. Not to say it, it's manipulated in any way, but there's just a relatively few number of people that have adopted it. The difference between this, you know, quote, cycle versus a previous cycle is there's actually applications that have been built. This isn't 
pure speculation on whether or not it'll work. There are applications that have been built on top of the technology. There's real money going into it. There's hedge funds that have invested, institutions that have invested. And once they've deemed that it's, that it's okay, ideally they set a floor. We don't want to say that there is a floor that has been set and, and cryptocurrency in general, Bitcoin in specific, won't go below a certain value. But when you get people starting investing $100 million at a time, a billion dollars at a time, they kind of set a floor that they say, look, we feel like it has this level of value. And if it starts to drop, if the value starts to drop, we're probably going to come in and buy some more. Again, we're, mm -hmm. we're not saying that will happen, but, but Toby, that's part of the education need, right? Because we don't want people to buy. We don't want people to invest based on hype or speculation or, or media or mania or anything like that, or some one news article they read or, or one headline they read or one tweet that they read. We want them to understand what happens. And if you understand the underlying technology a bit, you understand the, the forces that, that drive the market, then you can understand what those headlines mean. You can understand what happens when, what it means when some institution comes out to buy. And you can understand what it means when a particular government decides they're going to put a ban on cryptocurrency or something. And if you understand that, then you can, you're not subject as much to the mania and the speculation because you, you have an investment thesis at that point. I agree with that. I think that the mainstream element of it is, is been really encouraging, hasn't it? Where, where we've seen institutions and governments sort of starting to, to, to back and lean into this. And in fact, this morning, I was talking to the former vice chair of, of one of the major US banks. And he was talking to me about, about you know, growth of our, of our business and various other, other areas. And, and obviously by nature and by trade, we're a recruitment company. And the job creation in, in various areas of financial technology has always been uh, pretty interesting. One of the things he was saying is, would you would you focus a business solely and exclusively around that? And, and in honesty, I think it, I've seen it as a division in the past. But you've been talking to me about some fairly compelling statistics about the sort of number of jobs on various crypto specific job boards. What's your view on on crypto as a yeah, you know, I guess as a career almost at the moment, and where you think that sort of heads for 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 people, and and it to be a a boom area for employment right now. Yeah, well, crypto as a career. First of all, you know, I have a daughter. I'm teaching her how to code, right? Like she she needs to know programming and code because she will always have a job, right? If you're if you're coming up in in high school, early college, or something, and you want to make sure, and and you're at least the least bit interested in in things like logic and math and, and code and such, and you learn that, you will always have a very good paying job. Now, that, that being said, there are so many opportunities now in, in what we call crypto. What, what it really is, is the new generation of finance, the new generation of, of databases, of how information is stored and, and how money is moved around the world. So if, if you're in the banking realm, if you're in the financial services realm, you're kind of going to have to understand this if you understand the technology and you believe that this is kind of the next generation of finance, this is what the next financial ecosystem will be built on, then you have to understand it. And, and you ha don't have to look much further than the fact that Visa is adopting this, Ma MasterCard is adopting it, American Express will adopt it, all these big banks are doing it because it's a new way to move money. It, it doesn't utilize necessarily all the old banking infrastructure. It's a whole new infrastructure. And therefore, if you're in the quote, crypto realm, it used to be that you were just a programmer, you were just a coder and, and you were building some new protocol or some new blockchain or crypto, or you were trying to trade it and make a quick profit. Now it is, you know, I, I work at a bank or I work in construction, or I work in real estate, and I have to understand how we're going to utilize this technology to account for my investment, to account for my ownership, to be able to move the title of my house or title of my real estate holdings around more easily. And, and also account for it financially. Those are, are some of the aspects we're looking at. And that's where we've seen so much adoption, right? It's not only the, the programmers and the coders. It's not only the hardcore engineers where, where there's so much need for that. But it's you need customer service people for, for banks and, and crypto exchanges and digital asset exchanges. And those are customer service people that just know how to deal with clients, know how to answer questions and be able to, to be nice on the phone and nice on chat. So there's so much of a, a, you know, more of a career. It's how in, in the banking world, are you going to look at payments? Are you going to look at, at moving money around when some of it can be denoted on this blockchain technology, which allows me to move money to you, Toby, within a few seconds for virtually no fee? 
if you're yeah. a banker, how, how are you going to fathom that? How are you going to understand that? And you can either say, I don't agree with that. It's, it's never going to work. Or you can go, I want to really understand that technology because it's either going to put me out of business or I'm going to make sure that it's a viable part of my business. And that's always been the interesting part for me about the, the sort of, I guess, I guess view of, of disruption from the banks who, who've sort of obviously been, you know, for, for many of the last 10 years at threat from a fintech revolution. They're talking about, um, you know, being challenged by fintechs and, and what the, the banks have, have done is rather than try and squash that or fight it, they've tended to embrace it and work out how they can, you know, maneuver it into their offering and, and, uh, right. and, and, and adopt you know, that, that technology. That seems to be happening exactly the case at the moment where we're seeing institutions uh, sort of really embrace it as a standard asset class you know, within it. Is that where you see the future of crypto? Or do you see it as a sort of disintermediation of the banks? Uh, there's definitely a, quite a bit of disintermediation going on. I mean, let's be honest, that's the whole reason Bitcoin was created, right? Mm -hmm. It was basically to combat, to take out the banks. Now, I, I don't feel, and, and this is my opinion, this is our opinion, this is not fact by, by any means, we don't feel like they're going to completely take out the banks. But look, the, the source of banks' power is the fact that they control the ability to hold on to your money, and they control the ability to get you to use your money, right, to be able to move it around the world. And move it means I'm paying for coffee, or move it means I'm sending it to you in exchange for some sort of goods and services, mm -hmm. right? They control that. And by virtue of that, they've been able to, to squash a lot because they say, look, we control all this. We can just drop the price. We can drop the fees anytime we want, but we still have that level of control. And what, what blockchain does, decentralized finance, cryptocurrency, is it basically says, no, no, we as the people, as those running the networks and such, we can take back that control now. We, we now have the technology to be able to do that, to control the flow of money back and forth. And now it's up to the banks to figure out how they're going to adopt that, how they're going to take what they've had for years, which is the ability to hold on to your money, keep it safe, move it around the world, and adopt that to uh, adapt it to new technology that basically says, I can send you money anytime I want to for virtually no fee, and it'll get you within a few seconds. How, how are we going to do that? How is the banks, are, are we going to do that? And again, they can either try to squash it and say, we're, we're going to regulate it out of existence, or we're going to buy those companies and then make them go away so that they don't interrupt us, or we're going to figure out how to use that technology uh, as part of the, the system we already have and make ourselves more efficient. Visa has, has kind of gone that route, right? They've started not just crypto payments, but they've started settling payments utilizing cryptocurrency rails. That's a, that's a very big deal, right? That, that's mm -hmm. a very big deal when you settle in, in a realm that is not the banks. It's not the bank custody. When you settle somewhere else, that's a really big deal. And banks are, are going to have to try to adopt that. And therefore, they're going to have to find people that, that are willing to do that, that, that understand a, a bit of the technology, but also understand how banks have been doing business for so long. Because you can't just have someone who can code and, and create a protocol, but doesn't understand what real people need to do with their money, right? Yeah. Why do I need to buy something? Why is it important that I invest in your business or you invest in my business or you get a loan from me? Why is that important and, and what does that do to make the, the financial system work? And that's what banks understand. And if they, can, if they can take the new technology and adapt it to what they've been doing for so long, which is keeping the economy running by taking my money, keeping it safe and lending it to you, then that, that's going to be really, really powerful. And there are going to be so many jobs created because anytime there's efficiencies that are new efficiencies that take out old ways of doing things, it creates a ton of new jobs for the people that understand it and embrace it. And that, that sort of people who understand and embrace, I mean, you've been educating the world as quickly as you possibly can <laughs> over, the, over the last year or so. There still remains a sort of huge ignorance for want of a better word about it. Who, oh, yeah. who's been reaching who's been reaching out to you and who, who what sort of people are sort of getting that uh, you know first mover advantage and seeking to educate themselves at the moment in the space so those people that are looking to educate right for, first it's financial advisors that are finally you know understanding that th this is here to stay their clients really want it so they're addressing the the goals of their clients right they we have clients who want to invest in this therefore we need to go to you guys to understand what it is and how we make it part of our practice so we're, we're getting those people reaching out. We're getting family offices 
that, that are coming to us saying, can you just please help us with investing? What, what types of investments can we make in this? How do we keep it safe? How, how do we maybe invest early stage into some of these cryptocurrencies, protocols, tokens? Um, we're also getting you know, real companies, real estate type companies, construction type companies, shipping companies that are saying, how do we adapt the technology? How do we understand the technology and adapt it and adopt this so that we can make ourselves more efficient, so we can make ourselves have a better business? We're getting all sorts of those types of companies because you have to remember, Toby, there's, there's a difference between investing in cryptocurrency and hoping, it, of course, it goes up in value or earns you some sort of yield and adopting the technology to make your business better or to make your life better or starting to use the, these protocols as kind of a, a, an offshoot or, or instead of using it, instead of using a bank. So there's a difference between adoption in investing in it and adoption in actually utilizing the technology. And the amazing part about this is, is when you say cryptocurrency, when most people say cryptocurrency or blockchain, they're usually talking about the investment in the cryptocurrencies. But when we talk about it, we're not only talking about the investment, we're talking about the adoption and, and how important that will be. And you can invest in the companies that are creating the, the rails that are allowing for more adoption of the technology. I think that's a really important distinction to make, isn't it? Because you're absolutely right. You know, in, in many people's eyes, this is a sort of uh, advanced with higher stakes casino game for, for people to be right. playing. But but actually, it's the underlying technology is, is where a lot of the excitement is happening and, and the hype oh. has been a, a, around the whole, the whole place. Right? Oh, yeah. Talk, talk uh, to yeah, us that, a little bit about that so and what that means. Sure. So the, of course, there's been hype because the price has gone up, right? And when, and when the price has gone up and when, when you know, hedge fund people come in and, and when institutions come in, that's what gives us the ability to say, okay, maybe this isn't so much casino anymore as it is actual investment. And we actually can have an investment thesis that is beyond, above and beyond. I'm going to buy it at one price. In a week, I'm going to sell it at another price. I'm going to buy it back a week later. And I'm just going to try to make as much money trading it as I can. So they have kind of taken a little bit of the casino aspect out of it. Uh, but then the, the adoption and the investment in kind of the, the protocols, right? The, the ability to create banking type structures, the ability to lend money, to deposit, know that I'm going to earn interest. And then you, Toby, can come on, on the other side of this protocol of, of this bank-like structure, which is simply just an algorithm and say, I'm going to borrow. I'm going to be able to borrow money from here. And I don't have to ask permission. All I have to do is by virtue of the fact that I have this digital wallet, and I have cryptocurrency in there, I can now go borrow and utilize that for my business or, or my life or what have you. And I'll give you some examples. I use, we use, we have people uh, all over the world that help us out. There are bloggers, there are, uh, you know, people that, that help, help us write content, that help us get social media content out there, and they're all over the world. And I pay them in cryptocurrency. And I do it because it's really easy, because I can do it immediately. They can send me an invoice and be paid within seconds. On top of that, it might be a day where I don't want to sell some of the cryptocurrencies I own in order to do that. So I just borrow. I borrow mm. some, some, you know, something that's denoted in US dollars, something that's a, called a stable coin, right? So it's worth, it's a cryptocurrency that's worth roughly a dollar. And I use that to pay my people sometimes. And, and I have to figure out how to make that financial analysis that said, should I sell something or should I deposit it and then borrow elsewhere to be able to go pay my people? And so those types of applications are being built. We see applications being built in shipping right now all the time to make things so much more efficient. But, and you can invest in those applications right now. And, and it, it's not that much different from investing in, say, early stage tech companies, early stage internet companies, early stage you know, iPhone app development companies, right? They're changing the game. They're changing what the metrics are. And there's the ability to understand it and invest in those now. And you can invest in it from the perspective of, I have money sitting around and I want to invest it because I don't want to invest in the stock market. Or you can invest in it from the perspective to, to say, look, I have a business. I see what this other, the, this other project or this protocol or this company is doing use, utilizing blockchain. I either want to invest in them so that I can use it, or I want to buy them so that they can be a part of my service or figure out some way to work with them to make my business better. So it's 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 um it's interesting, isn't this? So, uh, you, you mentioned there about the you know the, the 14th of December at eighteen thousand eight hundred and thirty eight, and fast forward to today at fifty six thousand one hundred and thirty five. Pretty seismic differences in terms of, of where we're at. 
what's what i mean does that just continue inexorably what what, what are you know if you're you're getting your nostradamus hat on here where, where, where does this end where does this go to well first we, we don't give price targets we we don't talk about what what the price will be nor nor do we you know ever give financial again, advice on this there for a minute yeah the, the <laughs> yeah the, the disclosures here we're not giving price targets we're not saying what will happen if we look at what's happening in the world, right, as we said, it's a very different world from where we were six months ago when we talked last time, where we were all in lockdown and we weren't sure when there was going to be viable vaccines and how people were going to get them. And now, you know, we here in the U.S. and, and you over in the U.K. And, and a lot of Europe is getting ready to open back up, right? So we, we have a, a new world out there where everyone's getting ready to completely go back to work and, and life is going to get pseudo back to normal. The difference is there's now trillions and trillions of more dollars out there in the world, and we got to figure out a place to spend them. And that, j just from a pure crypto, from a pure Bitcoin perspective, the the numbers say that the the amount of dollars that are out there, the amount of euros and, and pounds that are out there now that weren't there a year ago means we should have some inflation. And when there's inflation, you should want to have your money in some sort of store of value which uh, of which Bitcoin is maybe the most perfect store of value ever created. Okay, that, that, that's not saying that it'll definitely go up in value. Uh, that's a there's a big if if there's inflation, if things get back to normal, if we don't have another pandemic, if things don't shut down again, all, all those things. On, on the grander cryptocurrency, you know, blockchain realm, it's taken this time, this last year has been people sitting there developing new applications, developing new ways that we can interact not only from an internet perspective, obviously we're doing so many more Zoom calls and podcasts and such, but now how do we interact financially? And that's those are the systems they're building. So if you believe that that is going to continue, if you believe we're going to have systems where you and I can interact financially more easily without having to use the bank rails, being able to use some of these crypto protocols, these blockchain-based protocols, then there are some of those that will probably increase in value because they're, they're just going to keep increasing adoption. And when you put the two together and you say, look, there are banks in Switzerland, there are banks here in the US, there are banks there in the UK that are starting to actually adopt blockchain-based or cryptographic protocols and, and, and adapt those within the banking structure, then you go, okay, I see where, where several of these will continue to increase in value because there will just be so much more adoption of them. And if you, if, if you look at the technology and learn about it and believe that, then we think there's so much room for growth. The same way they're, they're you know, back in 2001, 2002, there was so much room for growth in the internet because we didn't, we hadn't even scratched the surface of what was possible. All we did at that point was sell books and newspapers figured out how to put their, their headlines on, on a website. And that was pretty much it. We hadn't figured out anything else in the internet in 2001 and 2002, you'd have pop-up ads. That was about it, mm. right? And spam email. And, and think about how far we've come where I can rent a car on my phone and it'll <laughs> show up exactly where I am and I can pay for it without getting money out of my pocket. That's revolutionary. And no one in 2001 and 2002 take that for granted, that. don't you? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, so that's about where we are. I, I have no idea where it'll go, except there are companies and, and, and some of those companies are represented by cryptographic tokens that you can go buy on an exchange. And if you think that that value is there and you do your research and figure out which ones you think are valuable, I don't know where it'll go. I mean, you, you put the, the things out there for the smart people to take a hold of and build something, and they're going to build something pretty cool. Like this, for all I know, this might be the, the, the financial ecosystem we use when we all go to Mars in five years. <laughs> I don't, I mean, that technology is there as well, right? It's being there's built at the same wise, time. There's some pretty wise people who are, who are moving on that as we speak, aren't there? Exactly. I'm going to be able to use my phone to hire a rocket to take me to Mars for the week, and I'm going to be able to pay for it in some sort of cryptocurrency. You, that, that would seem far-fetched, right? But again, in 2001, it would have seemed far-fetched that I could order a car from my phone and pay for it w without having to take money out of my pocket. Yeah. yeah so it's, it, uh, it's kind of equally far-fetched. And, and the, the companies that are building those protocols to give us the, the, the ability to do that are being built right now. And the last year of COVID, surprisingly, has actually been very good for them because they've been stuck in their homes. They've been able to communicate you know, internationally, have disparate teams that, that can create things. And there's been all this currency that's, that's been printed at the same time. So there's been all this renewed interest in cryptocurrency 
by virtue of the fact that now hedge funds and institutions are going, well, there's going to be inflation. We got to have a place to put our money. And it's driven cryptocurrency adoption much faster than it, than it would have been. And um, what, what prompt, I mean, you, you've been ahead of the curve with this and sort of educated yourself on it and, and are now educating many others on, on, on it there afterwards, right? So to put yourself you know, right at, the, at the, the, the upward curve of this, uh, of this movement that we're seeing is, is extraordinary insight you know, to, to many extent. What prompted that for you? What sort of got you fascinated and hooked here and, 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 and sort of keeps you very focused on the journey? Because it looks like a, an outstanding move. Look, part of it was luck. And, and I wish I would have just put a whole bunch more money into it, right? Yeah. Instead of just trying to learn about it and educate people, we, we are obviously wish we would have put a whole lot more money into it. But it started with just buying some cryptocurrency. And then, you know, my business partner, Ron, telling me that there are thousands of these things, which I had no idea about. I didn't even know there was more than one at the time. Hmm. He said, there are thousands. And I kind of said, well, wh why would there have to be thousands? I don't even know, understand why there's one, hmm. much less thousands. And so that started the journey of, of understanding what the technology is and hearing about what really smart people think can happen once you start utilizing this technology. And then understanding, you know, in, in our experience from a financial perspective, where the inefficiencies are. And, and trying to right those inefficiencies, trying to, to create more efficiency there in the financial system and understanding that the internet brought so much efficiency in terms of how you and I communicate, right? We're doing this over a video chat. We, we're, you know, an ocean away. And yet, again, 20 years ago, this technology was, was sci-fi, right? Mm -hmm. The fact that I have this weird thing on my ears and I'm talking to you and we're looking at each other in real time. This, this was the realm of sci-fi 20 years ago. And now we're able to do that. Isn't it? Exactly. And so when, I, when, when we started going into the technology and we said, okay, from a financial infrastructure perspective, we haven't advanced. We haven't advanced along with the internet. This is the advancement along with the internet. And it makes total sense. We already connected all these people from, from, a, from a chat, talk perspective, email, the ability to, to look at each other and have a conversation in real time. So why can't we do that with our money? And this was the ability to do that with our money and our assets. And to me, the, the point was understanding that, that a blockchain, that the way a blockchain works is similar to how title or ownership of, of real estate works. And it, I had just recently bought a house at the time and I had had to go through title insurance, and we, which is basically making sure that the person before me actually owned the house and was able to sell it to me. And the person before them owned the house and was able to sell it to them. And the realization that that's what a blockchain is, that, that's what set it off to say, this is going to change everything. This is, this is just absolutely going to change things. And you think about it in terms of being able to own and control my, my own information, then. own and control my own medical information, my passport information. I mean, I, I had a conversation yesterday with someone from, from Portugal talking about the Portuguese golden visa. Right. And, and you there in the UK and us in the US, we totally take our passport and our citizenship for granted. Uh, and not understanding that there are so many in the world who would do anything to have one of our passports. Hmm. And, and, you know, that's why these, com these countries come out with their golden visas to say, here's what we want you to do. You can invest and we'll give you one of our visas. We'll give you one of our passports. Passport arbitrage is going to be a real thing. Countries competing to get you to get one of their passports by investing in their country. This isn't investing in a company. This is investing in a country so you can get their passport. That, that's you know, passport arbitrage, that's countries competing based on money, not, not for, you know, so, so that you'll have their, that, that's unbelievable to think about, but some of your identity, some of your health, your medical information, your ownership, what you own is going to be denoted on this new technology. And, you know, learning that several years ago, thinking through that and, and understanding we are so, so early in, in that cycle is exciting because, I mean, I'd like to know something that, that we're early in the cycle. I was in college when the internet came up and I didn't do anything about it <laughs> except utilize it to go look at sports scores. And I would like to in utilize really this slow <laughs> in, in a very, which I thought was remarkably fast. I used to have to wait for the next day to find out what happened, yeah. right? Or I used to have to wait until the, the news every night and then I could download it at ridiculously slow speeds and find out what just happened 10 minutes ago. That was remarkable at the time. And th that's what's going to happen with money. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is a, a, I find it fascinating just about how much development there's been in our conversation over a short period of time. So Adam, what we're mm -hmm. going to have to do is make this a regular feature. Um, and, Anytime, uh, yeah. 
and and catch up and do this on a quarterly basis because it's moving far too fast for it to be anything but isn't it it's been a, an absolute pleasure having you back on the show thanks so much for uh, for another education and, and uh, hearing everything that's been going on anything that uh, else you want to you want to finish off with uh, not really. Look, I, Toby, I just want people to go understand this and learn it. We're, we're not here to tell people you should go invest or not invest, or this is absolutely the greatest thing ever. We want everyone to find out for themselves and, and understand it at, at, at you know, your speed and your level, because we think it, it's really important. It goes beyond the importance to us of the internet, but we want everyone to, to understand it and learn it for themselves, not get scammed, not lose a bunch of money, do things, you know, easily to, don't think this is a, you know, magic. I'm going to, you know, not have a lot of money and then I'm going to be a, a multimillionaire. And, and that's really what we're, what we're going for. And if it means we talk quarterly and that gets one more person and two more people and three more people to come learn about this technology and learn about how it's going to impact them, that that's really what we're going for. That there's so much good content that you're, you're putting out. You mentioned it beforehand, the sort of increase of content. If it's increasing from where it was before, you've got an absolute ocean of information that, that uh, Interactors are putting out. Best way of doing that, I presume, is following you on LinkedIn, but also uh, checking out the YouTube page, right? Yeah, well, yes. LinkedIn, I'm, I'm on LinkedIn. On Twitter, we're at Interaxis 8 the number Interaxis, the number eight. Our website is interaxis.io where we have all our, our videos there, our, our blog posts and such. From there, you can get to our academy if, if you want to come learn about it for yourself and, and take a trip down there. So all, all of that is, is accessible, again, through our, our Twitter, our LinkedIn, our, our website is where you can hit all of that. Adam, I'll try and get my exclusive now and say in three months' time when we talk again, where do you think it's going to be? But I'm, I'm I know you're not going to be swayed on that, but it's uh, it's been nothing but an absolute pleasure talking to you again. Thanks so much for coming on the show and sharing the wisdom uh, and really good to have you on again. All right. Thanks so much, Toby. And, and always, uh, always glad to chat with you about this. Likewise. And thank you all for watching. We hope you've enjoyed another episode of Fintech Focus TV and we will be back and seeing you very soon. Thanks a lot.